These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Okay, so we're talking about nucleophilic attack on aldehydes and ketones, and we've discussed that there are a bunch of different categories. Um, you could have a single nucleophile attacking once, that would be category one, but in many cases we go beyond category one with a further reaction. For example, maybe a separate nucleophilic atom could attack. Uh, what type of functional group would fall into category two? Do you remember what's the main type of nucleophile that would put us in category two? Where we have two separate nucleophilic atoms attacked. I'm sorry? Alcohol. Yeah, that's good that you remember that. That's important to know. And we, we do that with acid or base catalyst. Acid. Yeah. Alcohol attack with acid catalyst is our main example of a category two type of reaction. Um, the main reaction of a category one, well, there's a bunch of examples, but one big one we talked about was Grignard's in category one. All right, and we have not talked about category three or category four. Well, that's what we're getting into with nitrogen. How is category three different from category two? Well, notice that in category three, we have a single nucleophilic atom that attacks twice. In category three, we're going to have a single nucleophilic atom that attacks twice, rather than category two, where we have two separate nucleophilic atoms attack. But there's a big similarity between category two and category three. The big similarity between category two and category three is that in both cases we have two nucleophilic attacks, so the carbonyl oxygen gets kicked off completely. The carbonyl oxygen only had two bonds to start with, so if, it, so if the aldehyde gets attacked twice, we have to completely break off that carbonyl oxygen, and that suggests that it's a good idea to always asterisk that carbonyl oxygen. We talked in the past about how the carbonyl oxygen might leave as hydroxide, although usually it leaves as water. I didn't have space to draw that, but we have that in the handout that we've seen before. So here the nucleophile could attack twice, um, and that would completely kick off the carbonyl oxygen. Okay, well. So now we need to talk about different types of nitrogen-containing compounds. You know what type of functional group this would be when you're ready? Amine. Yeah, that's an amine. And of course, these four categories are the same categories in that handout that I gave you last time. In fact, this would be a good time to take out that handout again. I just copied what was in the handout, and that shows that the four different categories of nucleophilic attack. Well, let's get that out. There you go. So here's those four categories right here on page one of the aldehydes handout. Now remember that when we talked about carbons, we talked about primary, secondary, and tertiary carbons. What's well, important to use similar terminology for amines. Remember, a primary carbon is attached to one other carbon chain, a secondary carbon is attached to two other carbon chains, and a tertiary carbon is attached to three other carbon chains. Well, similarly for amines, a primary amine is attached to one carbon chain. A secondary amine, I should be more specific, a primary amine is when the nitrogen is attached to one carbon chain. A secondary amine is when the nitrogen is attached to two carbon chains. A tertiary amine is when the nitrogen is attached to three carbon chains. So we're focusing on how many things are attached to the nitrogen. So primary? Yeah, this would be primary. Good. How about this? Would this be primary, secondary, or tertiary amine? Primary. Still primary because we're focusing on the nitrogen. Now this over here is now um, maybe a secondary carbon, but we're not focusing on what type of carbon we have, we're focusing on the amine. Well this is a, still a primary amine, so you count what's connected to the nitrogen, not what's connected to the carbons. Alright, and then what type of amine would this be? Secondary. Secondary, a secondary amine. And it's not necessary for the two carbon chains to be identical. So this would also be a secondary amine. A shorter way to write a secondary amine might be like this. 
we know we use R for alkyl chains or carbon chains, so this would be a shorthand for a secondary amine. And this would have been a primary amine. So how about this? Tertiary. Yeah, tertiary. Notice that the more carbon chains you're attached to, the fewer hydrogens you're attached to. A mistake that I really very commonly make is putting the wrong number of hydrogens on. Remember that a nitrogen, a neutral nitrogen, should be attached to three things. A neutral nitrogen should be attached to three groups. So how do you know how many hydrogens there should be? Well, you figure out how many bonds you've already got with carbon chains, and then you put in as many hydrogens as you need to get up to three if you're neutral. Well, here we don't need any hydrogens because we've already got the three carbon chains. It's possible for a nitrogen to be attached to four things, but then it would have a charge. That's not too uncommon for that to come up, for a nitrogen to be attached to four things. What would be a good name for this? Tertiary. I mean... Quaternary. quaternary, that's right. Well, I think we briefly talked about quaternary carbons last term. But a quaternary amine would have to have a positive charge. That's a little less common, but that still can come up. And of course, no hydrogens. Oh, well, I guess it could have hydrogens as long as there's four things total. Or, uh, huh. oh, now I'm confusing myself. I guess to really be quaternary, it would have to be four that carbon be chains. Four. Yeah, so. I'm not quite sure about the terminology there. All right, but anyway, four carbon chains would definitely be quaternary. Also, remember last term we saw, what about, say, this carbon? What's the name for this type of carbon, primary, secondary, or tertiary? Well, we saw that none of those apply. Yeah, this is attached to zero carbon chains. So the most logical name for this would be zero ary, but what they actually call it is methyl. This would be a methyl carbon. Well, you can have similarly, what if the nitrogen looks like this? This doesn't have any carbon chains, but well, there's just a common name for this molecule. This is a common molecule, sorry. Ammonia? Yeah, that's ammonia. You can see that the name ammonia is similar to the name amine. So ammonia behaves similarly to amines because they have nitrogen. So you can also have nitrogen with no carbon chains. That's kind of like a methyl. All right, so these what's, are important terminology. What's ammonium? Ammonium is when you've got the positive charge. So this would be a quaternary ammonium ion. So NH4 would also be ammonium? That's right. In fact, when pe if people just say ammonium, this is what they mean. Okay. So it, uh, unless they give me more specifics, they, they probably just mean NH4+. plus. That's right. That would be ammonium. And, and that's something we might see as well. That's right. Just like hydronium is H3O+, plus ammonium. Okay. So now we've seen the different types of substitution we can have on the nitrogens. And um, it's good to keep in mind that ammonia generally behaves similarly to the other amines, especially it tends to behave similarly to a primary amine, because they both have lots of hydrogens. Well, what we have to do now is see how do all these different types of nitrogen-containing compounds attack aldehydes and ketones. For each type, we have to find what category does it fall into.